Hello, Biohacker Nation. We're back again for another week. Once again, in our new studio here in Cold Snack. This is Dr. Mike. And as always, Mad Scientist Jim. What's up? And we have a special guest coming back for us once again, the Great Dane. Dane Cooch. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> a man of many words. <laughs> or one just a few times. All right, we're going to start off with the usual. Yeah. Just because we may be located in the world's greatest integrative therapeutic setting here in the entire world, we're not here to treat, diagnose, or cure any of your diseases or ailments, so find a competent physician, and if you just so happen to be in the state of New Jersey, the tri-state area, swing by a cold snack, and uh, go check out those awesome guys at Functionized Integrative Therapeutics, right off of Route 34 and Route 18, next to Delicious Orchards in beautiful Colts Neck, New Jersey. Those right guys by will the take care of you. Of course, they'll get you nice and functionized. They will get you functionized, but the show's not going to do that for you. <laughs> also, the huge tell a friend, tell a family, get them to subscribe. You guys are doing awesome with these subscriptions. We're starting to rock out to uh, four or five digits of subscribers now. Yeah, we're having more people every week. It's fantastic. Again, keep it up. It helps us out. Same thing with those five-star honest reviews. Really appreciate it. Help us get the word out to everybody else. And last but not least, 51C3. <laughs> means you can donate. Donate. Helps out a little bit. Go on site. You know, it'll make us look forward to our next office. We end up getting next studio. Exactly. So. All right, so let's get this show rocking and going. Let's talk of the uh, Great Dane here. Last we left off, he went to keto for at least 45 <laughs> days, yes. and uh, we were proud of the guy. Very tough. Did a random year analysis on him one day, and uh, we had a little purple coming out, too. So he had some ketone bodies floating around, which is normal because usually it would be chocolate fudge coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really, I had a lot of fun doing it. Some really hard times. I mean, there were some times where I really almost pulled into the Taco Bell drive through and pulled out, you know. Um, but, you know, anyway. Always pull out. Yeah. <laughs> always, always at all times. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was, I, I, you know, Jim surprised me one day. And uh, random urine test, and <laughs> I kind of passed. I thought I'd be a little bit more purple than I was. Than I was. I think allegedly I, passed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, on the poll, um, your girlfriend did say to shave your head. Right? Yes, my girlfriend. Was, was there one vote, or was there more? <laughs> oh, there was a lot of votes. A lot, we had like over hundred votes on that one. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, and wanted, uh, the only one that said not to shave your head was you. Yeah. All right. So they wanted. Luckily, you know, they're great guys over here, and uh, they did not shave my head. Um, I would have done it, but you know, maybe maybe another challenge or something in the future. We'll see. We should figure out some challenges for him just for the heck of it now. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge is open for a challenge. <laughs> so I do got to ask because uh, I know you pretty well at this point, Dan. So you did ketosis. Uh, you went for forty five days. What was your meal afterwards? Because I'm sure you had this <laughs> elaborate breaking. Meal. Well, let me give I mean, you this. Kept on like toying with it. Let uh, me give you this. Bell. So I went thirty days first. That was the original thing, and then after I got tested, uh, my girlfriend. She wanted to go to New York City, walk around, you know, the whole girlfriend thing. So we went to New York City. Um, great place, by the way. And first we went to Shake Shack. Um, it's all over. Oh. <laughs> uh, went, so um, we went there, and I uh, took so so much of me not to order a shake. I just got the, the shack, got the burger. You know, stripped the bun. Nice and easy. Boom, boom. Had my bacon, my cheese, my burger. It was awesome. Felt great. Uh, so I made it through the first obstacle. Then later on in the night, we did, a, we did a lot of walking, which was tough. You know, I, was, I started getting hungry. I had no almonds on me. It was, I was getting a little nervous. So then I went, we went to a place called, I think it's like Milk. Apparently, it's one of those hipster, uh, you know, real trendy ice cream places. And, you know, we waited in the line. I said, and then finally I said, you know what? Let me have ice cream. So I got this ice cream from there. It's supposed to be really good. And it was like cornflakes, like milk cereal type of ice cream. And mm. I got it, and it was not good. <laughs> it was, like, and surprisingly enough, like ice cream, yes, it was not good. I, yeah, so that was 30 days in. Then I went another maybe 15, 20 days. And then finally I said, you know what? Let me have like the meal. Um, Taco Bell it was, $22 bill. Got my Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And I, I literally felt like I was going to like just – Pass out. I ate so much. Like I was like, I, I googled. I think even like, can you die from eating too much? <laughs> and before, I fasted for twenty four hours, and then I ate my like just to like make it. I don't know, make it that much sweeter. And then I ate my uh, my Taco Bell, my ice cream, and ooh, that was rough. So the short answer was ice cream and Taco Bell. And yes, it was yeah, that's short answer. It. I don't have I don't have short answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a long story. Um, it, it, that, that was worth it. One hundred percent worth it. 
So the main topic we had today is talking about eating at night, especially. Um, the, one of the ideas came up because, well, lately I've been having this acid reflux that is insane. Can't sleep for the last couple of weeks, lie in there, and just acid sitting there. So with a lot of foods that I know that cause acid, you know, glasses of red wine, for instance, <laughs> Um, what else you got there? Use that once or twice. Cocoa or cacao, like I like mm. to partake in. It's delicious, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much every staple of my diet helps contribute to acid reflux. And the fact that I have found how good these Quest cookies are, when you take two <laughs> peanut butter ones, take an ounce of butter, I think wedge it's like it in the, the middle, time we squish about it. This one, I yeah. can't get over it. They're so <laughs> good. But having that at midnight when you can't sleep because of acid reflux doesn't exactly help the reflux. So yes, I mean, these two things kind of brought us to the topic of today of, so how much are you, uh, you know, what are you doing to yourself eating these giant fatty delicious meals late at night with the red wine? Exactly. And um, well, like always, we got a few papers and a lot of cool information to talk about. Uh, you want to get a start? <laughs> Be my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> the ideas of eating and stopping eating at 6, 7 o'clock at night, or I always thought it was like a bodybuilder thing because you're going to burn fat at night, you can't have calories, you want to cut down. And I kind of thought that was hogwash a little <laughs> bit too, and to some extent I still think it's some hogwash. depends on what you're doing. Goal-specific, I'll go with that. Very goal-specific. It also, though, does affect your circadian rhythms of when you eat. Some people eat huge meals at night. They keep pushing it back, pushing it back. The day, I mean, you got so much to do during the day with the six, seven hours of social media. I mean, that's a staple, right? <laughs> you got another two hours of Netflix. That's right, with breathing and eating. Then you get your full time job where you put in about five minutes of actual work. <laughs> was, that, uh, was that five minutes or 15 minutes in office space? You remember that? Um, Bob, I put in about 15 minutes of actual work each week. Probably 15, yeah. 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 Not in my case, by far, but <laughs> it's, it's a movie. Good one. Go watch it. Nice throwback. But individuals that suffer from post-nasal drip, cough, difficulty swallowing when they eat right before bed, they're actually signs of acid reflux. And you don't necessarily have to have that heartburn indigestion, but just these allergy-type symptoms that I just discussed, swallowing difficulties, coughing, post-nasal drip, those are all signs and symptoms of it. And there's ways to switch it, obviously. I certainly hope so. The idea of eating dinner late, as we just talked about. Where do I start with this? I mean, <laughs> this is a big topic here. Let's see, wherever you start, I'll go ahead and follow with. Yeah, there's, um... <laughs> the stomach takes a few hours to empty after your meal. And as individuals age, it takes longer to digest this. Or, you know, when people go through things that slow down their digestion naturally, you know, like sleeping shortly after you eat, that tends to do it as well. Exactly. And what should we call it? Too much acid <laughs> reflux over time even causes esophageal cancer, for instance. And just since the 70s, it's risen fivefold. Okay. And it's been contributed a lot to, just as we're talking about, eating too late at night, not allowing the stomach to empty out. I mean, it's not everyone's just like you where you get hungry and eat this awesome little fat bomb of the snack and a lot of people are just busy it you know the all freaking day they go home and say oh you sit on the couch and then start eating something right and right. when the something is not you know some of dane's awesome fat bombs that <laughs> i still can't replicate I didn't for some them. reason yeah, i've been hearing about these <laughs> forgot. but eating the big pastas let's have some pizza let's have our rice with our high protein meals things that are taking a while to digest throughout the system i got i got one question so now, from a non-scientific point, as always, um, <laughs> see, I, I have a problem eating at night because I like to, you know, I work all day, I get out, I come home, and it's almost like out of boredom, of convenience, is, is the reason why I think, personally, I eat more at night, just because it's like, I'm busy all day, I'm not eating that much, and then I get home and it's like, all right, baseball game's on, basketball game's on, this is on, let me just eat, because I'm bored. bored. It's a lack of self-control. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a question somewhere here? <laughs> no, that's more part of habit, though. I mean, when you put on a game, you put on a Super Bowl. Does anyone uh, ever just sit down and have watch the Super Bowl? Don't even have a it, glass of water. It's almost illegal to not eat wings. a lot when you're right. watching. You got to have wings. You got to have the nachos. You got to have, I mean, burgers, hot dogs, 
pulled pork. You got to have beers flowing. You got to have hard. I mean, you were having a full smorgasbord bar buffet for the Super Bowl. So why is it any different if you got a regular lazy hazy midsummer dog day of summer um, Yankee game going? You're gonna probably want something to snack on, something to munch on, something to drink. You, you're doing the same thing, even when we go to games, concessions. Why, do you really need a hot dog? No, but it's much better eating a $12 hot dog at Yankee <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> a lot of people, though, they end up reaching with these indigestion for um, acid-blocking drugs, proton pump inhibitors more specifically. So Prilosec, Nexium, Prevacid, all different things to treat acid reflux, and none of them giving you a long-term fix. You need acid in the stomach. And just covering up the symptoms isn't actually curing the issue. I mean, if your issue is eating you know, a lot at night, taking something, you know, proton pump inhibitor or something, isn't going to stop because you're still, well, eating late at night. All right. And you need the acid in your stomach to kill off things such as, you know, bacteria. Maybe we do have that for a reason. Yeah. Not the bacteria. I mean, we have that too. That's... You know, we're digress if we continue H. pylori on, yeah. infections, which leads to ulcers. But, I mean, proton pump inhibitors, while I may be a little bit hippie on drugs here, uh, they do have some merit when you want to treat, say, bleeding ulcers or zollinger ellison syndrome, even severe acid reflux only when uh, there's damage to it, yeah, confirmed so by endoscopy. That's why you know don't do figure out your own things from asking Doctor Google. This is stuff you know a competent doctor will tell you again. As long as the problems you got the correct problem diagnosed, then maybe it's going to help it out. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you're eating a lot of stuff at night, I mean, go for the simple route first. Even if that means you know you don't get to eat as much mm -hmm. watching your game. But so that's one of the big things about not eating or eating. You can also use it as a good opportunity for intermittent fasting. Okay, we'll okay, do that one. Good excuse. You just binge dead on 3,000 calories of cookies and heavy cream. Might as well just take a couple hours off. I mean, if you stop eating at 7 o'clock, you're just fasting for, say, 12 plus hours. I like that 16 hour mark, but mm -hmm. just 7 a.m., 12 hours right there. You can go another four hours after that. That's 11 a.m., have your first meal, and you just had a 16 hour fast. Voila. Mm hmm. <laughs> So keep on talking. Beauty brain <laughs> is probably this delicious blue cheeseburger. So we're killing it. Self advertise a different food every episode. Yeah. <laughs> right. No tequila involved this one. There was wings before, burgers every other time. Okay, yeah. Now we're going back <laughs> off again. So a couple of different things. There's been there's a lot of research, a lot of studies done on pretty much well this general topic. What happens when you eat too much or really anything at night? And a uh, big way they were doing these studies is they would take you know. They do what they should. They take a couple different groups of people and they would give them, um, say, three large meals or three meals, uh, same amount of calories all day, the identical meals. The only difference they would do, one group would have, let's say, a large breakfast meal, one would have a large dinner, and then you know, it would just swap the exact amount of calories. They I mean, had like 800 calories in the morning and 300 in the afternoon with a 500 lunch. And what they ended up founding on pretty much throughout all these studies was as far as weight loss goes, people who ate the big meals in the morning lost two and a half times more weight in just a three times period. So you know there's a difference between nine pounds and three pounds. Um, as well as you know insulin levels, insulin resistance got better. Uh, gastric emptying pretty much means that you know your your stomach, your GI tract was happy. Um, all that just ended up improving from eating larger meals in the morning as opposed to at night, following that circadian rhythm type style. So you know our bodies. Whenever we hear circadian rhythms, people usually think of sleeping. But, I mean, our hormones go through circadian rhythms, and when you eat, there is a crap ton. <laughs> there you go. Hashtag crap for it. Of um, hormones that go around from it just from eating. So there is circadian timing patterns, and there's reasons for it. Um, but Dane actually asked the question quietly uh, about was there any positive reasons of eating food at night. And, uh, you know, we can touch that a little bit here. Um, we'll start with more big no-nos. If you're going to eat at night, keep it to one macronutrient. As in, you don't mix in a bunch of protein, fat, and carbs. If you keep it just one, like all fat, have fat bombs, eat a stick of butter. I mean, that's going to be a lot better than having a like whole that? mix of <laughs> um, Again, also keeping under 200 calories. If you end up doing these things, you know, one macronutrient, 200 calories or less, you're not going to, it shows you don't really have any negative outcomes or side effects from eating late at night. Uh, granted, that doesn't even fulfill what, like a seventh of your cookie monster 
heavy cream binge, but a thousand yeah, calories. Take a bite of it, maybe. Best, <laughs> <laughs> but um, there were a few things done. But it gets oddly specific with a few of these studies that showed uh, things like if you have recreationally active men, so people that aren't really like they're the diehard athletes, uh, if they end up eating a little bit of casein protein actually increases their muscle syn- uh, muscle protein synthesis at night. But it wasn't holding true for women or those with diabetes. It was just somewhat active men. And if you want to get into casein, we know we're supposed to start talking about how that's pro-inflammatory. So for all those people out there that are about to bash <laughs> us for that, we know what you're talking about. Yeah, this is just a study, things that you can eat, but yeah, you might get... There's a negative thing. Might not be the best thing for casein. I'm trying to promote something for good things on eating so that way I don't just keep telling you, no, don't do it, which it's... You can people like you're gonna do what you want anyway. More don't have enough to eat this burger. I'm just <laughs> keep on going. You're on a roll, Doc. <laughs> but um, I feel like it was another part of the question. Maybe there wasn't. So yeah, if you're gonna eat late at night, the best way of doing it is keeping it small meals with macronutrient. Other big negatives is uh, Jim. How well do you sleep? When? Well, I said how well, but that was a better answer. <laughs> um, when is the uh, answer? The past month, I'd say. Because another big thing with people, uh, I mean. I had a lot of friends who would have nightmares all the time, and what a big part of most of them was was they were eating in the late at night. That does seem to cause a lot more, uh, just a better chance of nightmare, especially if it's high sugar, though it was showing with anything, even probably those wonderful fat bombs I keep, you know, just dancing in my head. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I mean, obviously there's problems. You want to be able to sleep. I mean, nightmares then obviously have problems with it. You're not going to sleep as well. You're kind of ruins the whole point of it anyway. Uh, I know some people, they used to say they would sleep to help eat. I mean, sorry, reverse that. They would eat to help sleep. Mm-hmm. And then they had bad sleep because they had nightmares and couldn't do it anyway. And then if you sleep, have these, right? Yeah, but then if you have these people that are most, a lot, so many people are hypoglycemic. I mean, it's not just diabetics. They're eating uh, the carbs. When you get those cravings for carbs, I mean, that makes this even worse. Because, I mean, when you have routine insulin spikes, you're eating all the sugar late at night, it messes with your cortisol levels. And you really need that to be able to break down glucose while you're sleeping to take care of all those visceral functions and everything you're doing where you're passed out. It also helps those little things like promoting HGH production. I mean, that's just a fact. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got food in your really belly. like facts here. You're not going to be releasing human growth hormone. And if you're releasing more human growth hormone, your body recovers far better. It also oh, promotes... there was a point to this. Okay. Yeah, there was a point. <laughs> well, if also you stopped eating the burger for a second, there had to be something important. Burns fat. It uh, slows aging and helps with your just overall fitness. This is your natural mm-hmm. HGH. I'm not talking about, you know, the... Uh, no needles or anything. Not that well. shady guy in the corner, but I'm talking about, you know, what your body <laughs> actually does on its own. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, again, there's a lot of hormones involved with it. So, I mean, it's important. And then uh, a lot of people, when they eat, not only the nightmares, uh, especially sugar is notorious for this. And people wake up at 3 or 4 in the morning or they wake up really nauseous. has a lot to do with it since there wasn't enough cortisol in it. I mean, go down this whole uh, alley or probably roll your eyes at this, this comes into the idea of what people call about uh, quote-unquote adrenal fatigue. But, I mean, if you can't release enough cortisol to get all the sugar through your body, your body then releases uh, adrenaline, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and then that's going to wake you up because it gives you this fight-or-flight response and make you nauseous, anxious in the morning. And there goes your whole restful sleep. Again, food at night's great, but got to kind of make it worth it. Yeah. Sleep is being shown here. <laughs> Staves off Alzheimer's at least eight hours a night. Helps with your fitness, helps both physical and mental. Makes you happy. Yeah. Makes you happy. Your days are better. Now, let's just face it. It's not fun to sleep, but it helps. We're supposed to sleep. It's not fun to sleep? I mean, I guess I'm not, like, cheering or ecstatic through it, but... I'd rather watch Archer all night, I'll tell you, but... Oh, my gosh. That's all the <laughs> podcast saying. in itself. <laughs> oh, you look like you were smiling. Is something on Archer? <laughs> Never saw it. What? Hold on. Hold on. Okay, we, we have a new challenge. This is a crisis going here in a functionized integrative therapeutic studio here today. If you didn't hear the danger, that he's never watched Archer, and we, there's a personal problem we have with this. Or I, why? You've known us for how long? You haven't seen this? I have no idea what the show is. I know it's about a bone arrow guy. Well, now it is. <laughs> uh, okay. It's really the uh, world's greatest spy who's ever existed. A Netflix show? It was, now it's just been taken off. Oh, no. So how am I going to watch it? There may be other sources on the web. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe but, I'll just uh, go buy it at Target. It's worth it. I mean, yeah, how long did it take you to watch it? We're in Cairo school. I'm watching it daily to go to sleep at night. And you hear it on. And then 
it, and what it took you years to watch it. And in my defense, I was, I mean, I have no excuse for this part of that. I've never watched South Park either. In my defense, I was going through all 17 seasons of South Park at the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had no interest in Arch. I'll, I'll admit that I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He, he was wrong. It, it's on the calendar. It happens maybe once every year or two. It was official. I was wrong. Or I guess it wasn't wrong. There was nothing wrong about it. it no, no, it's not wrong. We'll just, we'll just stick with that. Um, cool. Was, <laughs> great show. Watch it. They might have an episode on fasting. I don't know. <laughs> what are we talking about? About eating, not eating. Same stuff. Can we go back real quick to just to a few uh, remedies? Not sure. Cures or treatments or diagnosing anybody. Little napkins. Um, <laughs> but some things if you do start to get the reflux while you're taking your... Oh, there is a napkin. Go figure. Thank you. Yeah, it was about three inches to your left. Pretty hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> The while you're waiting for a couple of weeks for your body to regulate itself with your sleep patterns and getting rid of the acid reflux and not eating whatever carb laden food or quest protein food that you're eating at night, <laughs> you can do a few things to help ease the uh, the troubles. Uh, raw, unfiltered apple cider vinegar. I'm not promoting Bragg's, but I do like Bragg's apple cider vinegar. It is acidic, so if your body does not produce enough stomach acid in the first place, then here you are getting it. And if your body is not getting enough, I just watched uh, uh, Dr. Mike here do some prone cobra yoga. Yeah, why were you watching so intently? I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I freaked out, man. Oh, I feel so good, and <laughs> we'll call that moving. Uh. A little bit of apple cider vinegar, a little baiting. Helps with uh, hydrochloric acid. Uh, worst case scenario, I wouldn't continue this, especially with gastric dis uh, distress. But if it's an emergency and you're in dire excruciating pain, instead of a proton pump inhibitor, you can use a little baking soda. Aloe vera is phenomenal. Uh, just taking the poultice of the plants, or you can actually get the juice. It's actually quite bitter. I was say, it tastes fantastic. <laughs> You put a little bit of, uh, put it on top of some ice, and once you develop your palate, it's actually not that bad. It's kind of refreshing. Yeah, mix it with Everclear. It might make it taste better. Wow. <laughs> Great stuff. Don't get me wrong. I've used it. I'll continue to use it. Let's go to ginger root. Uh, oh, even better taste. Even chamomile. Ginger root or chamomile. Uh, ginger has gastroprotective effect. It blocks acid and suppresses H. pylori. And it's actually uh, been found to be superior to lansoprazole. Uh, for preventing any formation of ulcers, okay. which is a good thing, not for the drug company, but, you know. I care more about my stomach not having ulcers than giving a big farm another dollar. You'd think. But, I mean, it's what I care about, so yes. A little bit of vitamin D, <laughs> just to help your immune function if you are starting to have a bacterial overgrowth. And staxin, which has been shown to be such a phenomenal antioxidant. It helps reduce symptoms of acid reflux compared to a placebo. Uh, 40 milligrams a day is typically what to shoot for. Slippery Elm, it's another good one. That uh, I think you get the this stuff from the guys that functionize too, can't you? If you come to the office. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll be able to help. Uh, look <laughs> you up. Come with acid reflux, anything that'll make you more functionized. <laughs> Beer and cold time. Uh, glu time. Glutamine and uh, some B vitamins. Folic acid, B9. Uh, just go with the B complex. That way your body's not starving for others and battling back and forth to take your whole B-complex. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, no reason to be depleted in one vitamin. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Great Dane, you had some questions for us. Yes, I do. Well, right, one question I, I had. I didn't say you could say them. I just said <laughs> <"Your> <laughs> questions, right? I mean, I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to ask them. I'm going to ask him anyway. So, I'm hearing a lot of big words, not going to lie. <laughs> um, but one thing I have about caffeine and, uh -huh. and, and, and sleeping that was now, another thing. Now, you know, now it's not necessarily, yep. yeah, yeah. Not, not necessarily, you know, eating but drinking. Um, you know, a lot of pre-workouts or you know, working out or coffee or. W what is the time period on that as far as like when you should not have caffeine before sleep or you know if you get what I'm saying? Depends on the individual. I mean, certain individual like uh, Beauty Brains Braun over there, Shantae, she can have a large cup of caffeinated coffee and puts her right out at night. Someone like me, I have a little shot, if you would, of coffee, and I'm up for hours and hours and hours. So it really yeah, depends on the individual. sensitivity changes. I mean, I'm more like you with that one. I have a little bit of, I used to get in the, have a little bit of pre-workout to keep the energy going, and that was always a mistake past, like, noon. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's very individualistic. I mean, best don't have a lot, if you know you're sensitive to caffeine, don't have it right before bed. 
Yeah, the whole, I guess it kind of follows the common sense part on that one. The whole thing with sleep, your body builds up adenosine throughout the day, like in ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So with the buildup of adenosine, you get tired. Well, caffeine blocks the receptors for adenosine, and the levels get lowered, and therefore you're able to have that energy and keep on going. Okay, so I have a question then. So if I am going to work out at about 7 o'clock. P.M. or a.m.? P.M. All right. And I plan on, you know, I need to be in bed. You know, I want to I be able to fall asleep by 11. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, is there other supplements you could take for energy that won't affect sleeping? There's a great supplement. Uh, probably take it like two hours beforehand. It's called a nap. <laughs> uh, I don't All know if GNC natural. has it, but I think it was on sale. <laughs> <laughs> if they have a bench up in front of GNC, I mean, cops might come ask what you're loitering for. But you, yeah. can, you can take some ginseng, um, found to be American ginseng. For the, It's weird. With certain plants, that those plants that are native to where you live seem to have more benefit. So American ginseng mm-hmm. for people here in America as opposed to Chinese ginseng is much fun and exotic and sexy as that sounds. Okay, so I have like a green tea, you're saying? Yeah, well, you can have a little green tea if you want, which is not ginseng, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes it's, a, like it's a made with ginseng. I mean, you've got all these ideas of getting more energy, you know, make sure you're properly hydrated, uh, get be complex in. and uh, just Being more used to exercising at that time will also get your body more adapted to it, as opposed to fluctuating back and forth from like 7 in the morning, 7 at night. You'll get more used to it just having it at that normal time. Back to the whole patterns. And yes, because sometimes, you know, if I try to work out in the afternoon, morning, but if it's, you know, 7 o'clock at night and I just worked all day and I want to work out, but, you know, I really don't want to have a pre-workout or a coffee or mm-hmm. any type of caffeine, but I need to get this workout in. Yeah. Well, why do you need Suck a pre-workout? I might, not be, I might not be able to just <laughs> pop a nap in. You may not need a pre-workout in the first place. So it was a few months ago with an underground nutrition. Jay Cutler was over there, uh-huh. and I overheard him telling one of the guys, if you need a pre-workout to work out, you're obviously not – in the mental state to be working out. You shouldn't need a pre-workout. It should really be only for those days and those lifts that you need that extra oomph. Sometimes, you know, on a Friday <laughs> or on a Saturday when yeah. you've literally been working out five, six days a week, killing it. But if you're on Monday, you've had a good weekend of sleep, you're nice and refreshed, you really shouldn't need a pre-workout. I don't think our native ancestors on a uh, hunt needed pre-workout so to I go guess, catch some food. I guess or, I'm just lazy. <laughs> Your words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else you got? I do want. I do want to tell a story. Uh, if we, sure. If, if we got time. Sure. Well, uh, I guess we'll allow this one mystery story from Great Dane. <laughs> yeah. So while on my ketogenic journey, um, I was feeling. And this, uh, let me ask a question before I get into the story. <laughs> I, I was. I was. I was noticing. You know, I always felt a little bloated. Like I felt like. Okay, like, you know, I'm not eating, you know, I feel good, great energy, felt like I was losing fat, and, but I, I but my stomach just felt bloated. Mm-hmm. So, one, is there a specific reason while on that type of diet, you know, that you're, you know, an individual will go through that? Most likely, as you're a novice to it, your body is not used to the abundance of fat. Okay. Therefore, you're not producing as much lipase. The bacterial flora that you have in your gut is not used to it in the first place. So it's giving off extra gases, if you would, giving you that little distended feeling and look. And got to say something? I was just going to No, go. no, no, go ahead. Well, it's my excuse I'm not lost in train of thought. But um <laughs> <laughs> All right, well then the other question I had, you know, before I get into the story, um, as far as sugar alcohols really helped me as far as fight those cravings for, you know, carbs or sugar or anything like that. You know, I definitely, and, you know, I experimented with a couple di- couple different ones. I know xylitol was one mm-hmm. um, recommended by one of the, by the mad scientist himself. And then also I was, you know, stevia and stuff like that. Um, but I was just curious, like, on if there is a limit with that or, or when is too much sugar alcohol too much? Well, first, stevia is not a sugar alcohol. Sorry. <laughs> Here I go again with misinformation. But, well, that was a question. You're fine. You're okay. good. There is a tolerance that everybody okay. has. If you're feeling bloated like you were before, and that could have been coming from the sugar alcohol, Okay. it does screw up your flora and your intestines and your entire gut, which is another, literally it's another brain of your body, but that's another whole podcast in itself. Okay. <laughs> if you're having gastric distress, 
you know you've hit the limit. <laughs> if you're feeling bloated, you know you hit the limit. And by that you mean pooping, farting. Yeah, Dan. Sure. Sorry for yeah. my immaturity, but <laughs> <laughs> pretty much anything it's you just can explain. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, that's never a little bit where I was going there, but yeah, because when I first started going on keto uh, months back, I got we'll say I had gastric distress the first day. I probably should have known better, but I didn't. And it was uh, the next day when took uh, just proteolytic enzymes, and it made every pretty much that made it all better. Um, it was just my body didn't have you know the stuff available to break it down. But then when I did get into the sugar alcohol, some of those Quest bars and everything, my body wasn't used to that amount of xylitol, and I got it again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I've had so, the same thing. When I've had you know one Quest bar day, great. Five, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> like today, I uh, made these new uh, keto buns. And I had awesome. probably more of them than I should have. They were so good. Um, I mean, it feels they, like no, they were really good. They were so. It tastes like they were already buttered and warm, and I've, even though it was just out in the car and it's humid out, but you know. Will the recipe be posted anywhere? Uh, most likely, well, yes. As in, yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it might be more of those. Uh, I mean, if you want to guarantee, you can find that in over other recipes. We do have the insiders only section where that's where you're going to find all that detail. We do. It's not up yet, but it is a. Work in progress that will be up very soon. We'll have a bunch of fun stuff and recipes, including these keto buns, which were fantastic. It was made uh, basically from tahini, which is um, crushed seeds. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> really just getting sesame seeds. And then uh, that and flax. And then I added a few spices, make it, it was fantastic. Because we were just looking for, you know, I mean, Dan, you've talked about these low carb bagels that were pretty Definitely. sure gave you the, uh, the questionable test. Yeah, yeah. But, um, this. It was fantastic. There was about 40 grams of fat, 3 grams of carbs, and a, pretty much a day's worth of fiber per bun. They're fantastic. Uh-oh. You can tell me that part. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you this. What, the other thing I did do, you know, I, I, I searched. Care. I searched, and I ended up finding websites and stuff where you can get some, some keto and low-carb yeah, buns. Yeah, you're the master and, finding the sites. The, the thing is you do pay a lot of money for that. You know, I, um, a service like something you guys have with, where you can get recipes and make it yourself, I, something I would, you know. 100% purchase instead of spending $10 for four bagels or something like that or plus $7 shipping or, you know. Yeah, the shipping get you. But now I do want to, uh, if I may, I do want to at least just throw this one story and I promise I would tell you guys because it is something kind of kind of funny that happened while I was, you know, on this journey. Um, so, you know, I felt bloated and, you know, I was like, okay, let me, you know, maybe uh could be a couple different things. So I was like, you know, let me take a laxative. And never, <laughs> never. The take, show's getting better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I've I've never uh, took one before. So I was going to the crapper. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So I, I'm in the you know a right aid or a C, one of those places, and I'm like, all right, you know, looking through the shelves, and I and I got one, picked one out, you know, and so I went home, and it says you know I'm supposed to take it, I guess, before bed. I, I don't know. So I popped one. Okay. Reading the label helps, Dan. Just yeah. To let you know. I, I popped one, and um, I go to bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I woke up at, I don't know, 3 or 4 a.m., and I just had these, like, cramps. And I'm like, oh, man, but I'm, but I'm so tired, I didn't want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back to bed. I uh, I woke up, and let's just say this. I won't take a laxative again. <laughs> um, 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 I made it halfway to the bathroom. It was a mess. Oh. And <laughs> what? <laughs> And, you know, something that I would save him for the, yeah. I, I, <laughs> you know, so hopefully this isn't PG. I don't know if it yeah. is or what, but. Uh, I don't know if this came from you eating late at night. I thought maybe it was going to be, oh, yeah, the story about no, your journey of ketosis. I, 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 I didn't know. My body must have reacted foully. It was mid-sleep. I was, you know, I, speaking of nightmares, I thought it was a nightmare. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm having a nightmare Jim's right now. Back. So, you know, it was a rough one. And, uh, yeah, I won't be taking those again. I think I'll just. Uh, Good idea. Just uh, <laughs> Good idea. So I guess we can add to the podcast. Not only don't eat large meals at night, don't take laxatives right before bed either. Or don't sleep over at Dane's place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got anything else? No, nah, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Unless, Dan, do you have uh, questions? I think we're going to avoid stories for now. But, uh, no, I'm all, I'm all out, man. <laughs> now I'm thinking about, about the uh, other pre workout stuff, too. Like citrulline and. But you know what? We can do another show. Yeah. yeah, it's at least one more show. We a got plenty more topics, plenty more things to talk about. Never ending in the pursuit of human perfection. However, if you guys have ideas, things that you want to hear about, I mean, tell us. Send them to us. Uh, plenty of different ways. You know, send us an email, send a message, post it on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anything. Um, and 
Not anything more interest to you. We'll talk about it. And your comments have been greatly appreciated and welcome, and hopefully everyone we've been able to direct message back has been finding some benefit. And, yeah, we should start probably uh, putting them on the air, too. I like so, that idea. Yeah, we'll start a few more shout-outs, a few more guests. And, absolutely. Uh, start help passing out the word. We'll do that. So speaking of, Dane, it was great, uh, great again. Uh, we'll probably have you as reoccurring events of work. I mean, as long as Biohacker Nation doesn't mind listening to your uh, <laughs> wonderful nighttime. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how the feedback goes on that. <laughs> All right. But till then, once again, I guess I'm done. I'm out. How about you guys? I'm out. I'm out.